Chapter 631 Devilology The steeple's base was paved with black stone bricks and a colossal pillar rose proudly. Lumion felt like a visitor in a giant's kingdom as he strode through the expansive and dimly lit space. The occasional tall residents who effortlessly towered over him only heightened this impression. Guided by the signs on the wall, he ascended to the third floor, revealing rows of imposing bookshelves. The custodian of the library, an elderly man draped in a linen robe, oversaw the space. Even seated, he matched Lumian's height, and his slightly gray skin bore the marks of age. Engrossed in a goatskin-bound book, the library administrator paid no heed to Lumian's entrance, his gaze firmly fixed on the text. Lumian, not rushing to seek permission for his exploration, entered the library and followed the guidelines posted on each row of bookshelves leading to the section housing mythical books. He ran his finger over the weathered leather-bound book and another with freshly copied pages, choosing a tome that chronicled creation myths. Before the bookshelf, Lumion casually flipped through its pages, only to stuff the book back. He couldn't comprehend it. The words were in Jotun. This ancient language, associated with the beyonder race of giants, possessed the ability to manipulate the forces of nature. Ranked alongside Dragonese, Elvish, and ancient Hermes, Jotun held significant importance in mysticism. Although Lumion had mastered ancient Hermes and Hermes, Jotun remained a language he recognized but hadn't fully mastered. He could barely decipher the title of the ancient book, but couldn't comprehend its contents. A sweep of his gaze revealed the corresponding copy of the ancient book, this time written in ancient Faisak, a human language devoid of supernatural influence. Joy surged within Lumion as he retrieved the soft covered book and settled into the reading area near the window. Throughout the entire process, no one intervened or issued a warning. This library is entirely open to everyone, even though it's not residing in the new city of Silver can peruse its contents, but borrowing seems to be off the table. Or perhaps, the knowledge on this level isn't deemed confidential. Lumion mused, maintaining a steady pace. He strolled past the section dedicated to Beyonder creatures, and his keen eyes snagged a book titled Devilology. Devilology. Recalling recent encounters, Lumion snagged the corresponding copy. In the reading area, he chose a spot shielded from direct sunlight, yet bathed in ample illumination. Seated, he delved into the pages of Devilology. As he read, Lumion's eyes widened and his mouth hung slightly ajar. He murmured to himself, Is it really acceptable to have this kind of knowledge available to the public? Each piece of information was invaluable. The Devilology book meticulously outlined the traits and behaviors of creatures from various species after transforming into devils. It also provided detailed analyses of devils with distinct personalities within the same species. For those potentially facing beyonders of the devil pathway in combat, the value of this book rivaled that of a potent grade 2 sealed artifact or its corresponding mystical item. Moreover, how did the new City of Silver come by such knowledge? It's improbable they could compile creature illustrations without dispatching hundreds of devils. Could it be that the half-giants and giants here are devil hunters? Perhaps, in ancient times, when devils were more active, they shared information with other factions. Lumion grew more alarmed as he read on. Midway through, he massaged his throbbing temples, sensing a rapid depletion of his spirituality. Lumion temporarily closed Devilology intending to explore the creation myths of the new city of silver and take a well-deserved break. From the very outset, the creation myth read, The omnipotent and omniscient god created everything before slipping into a profound slumber. Among the mystical races he brought into being, Giant King Armir, Dragon of Imagination Ankuwelt, Elf King Sonya Thram, Vampire Ancestor Lilith, Devil King Farbalti, Phoenix Ancestor Gregris, Mutant, Mutant King Kvaster, and, and King, King of Demonic, Demonic Wolves Flegrea, emerged as potent and crazy beings. They partitioned the authority left by the Lord, transforming into ancient deities governing the sky, land, sea, reality, the spirit world, and the astral realm. Abruptly, a dull-skinned, slightly gray finger tapped a specific spot on the page. 
An aged, raspy voice echoed. Do not utter this name in any Beyonder language. Lumian looked up, surprised to find the library administrator, previously immersed in his books, standing beside him seemingly out of nowhere. As a hunter, Lumian remained oblivious. Partly due to the lingering dizziness from reading Devilology, it showcased the library administrator's proficiency in concealing both breath and movement, given his towering stature of more than three meters. Lumian redirected his attention to the name indicated by the library administrator. Devil Monarch Farbauti. Without awaiting Lumian's inquiry, the library administrator, bearing giant-like traits, shifted his finger a few centimeters and remarked, It's advisable to avoid pronouncing this name in any Beyonder language as well. Lumian followed the motion of the finger, silently noting the corresponding name in his mind. Vampire Ancestor Lilith. Why am I not allowed to read about it? Lumian expressed his ignorance without reservation. The library administrator spoke in a deep voice. The Devil King is still alive. This formidable ancient deity remains among the living. And the vampire ancestor is suspected to be alive as well. In recent times, an individual in the city experienced disturbances after uttering the name Lilith in Yotan. Although their life wasn't at risk, they endured prolonged suffering. Ancient deities, entities that once governed the world before the ancient sun god's era. Lumian recalled fragments of his limited knowledge and inquired thoughtfully. Did the ancient sun god rescue humanity from the dominion of these ancient deities? The library administrator, towering at more than three meters, turned to the last page and pointed. Lumian read the description. The omnipotent and omniscient gods stirred from slumber, rising from the earth to vanquish the ancient deities and reclaim his authorities. Note, in the present era, the omnipotent and omniscient god is also known as the ancient sun god. Indeed, among the eight ancient deities, devil monarch Farbalti is still alive, vampire ancestor Lilith is suspected to be alive, and the rest have perished. Giant King Armir. Why does that name sound familiar? Ah, the provincial capital renowned for its red wine and champagne. What ties does it share with the giant king? Lumian cautiously inquired, Can these two names be pronounced in ordinary human language? The vampire ancestors is acceptable, but it's advisable to refrain from attempting the devil monarchs. You must exercise caution even in writing it responded the colossal library administrator. We are uncertain if the devil monarch possesses any special abilities. Exercise caution even in writing. Are all demons like this? Yes, the deity of the devil pathway remains alive, an ancient being since the second epoch. Lumian murmured, his heart stirred. He retrieved the note with a love incantation from his traveler's bag. Have you encountered this name before? I came across a demon who identified itself as this. Much like the others, it cannot be spoken or written, only thought. The library administrator accepted the note with a hand capable of engulfing Lumian's head. His gaze swept over the name, Nabora Disley. He lapsed into deep contemplation. After a minute or two, he silently retrieved the copy from a concealed location within the bookshelf. The book's title read, a summary of rumors and hearsay before the cataclysm. 1. What a simple name. Lumian observed as the library administrator opened the newly acquired book, pointing at a particular line of text. As anticipated, it's right here. Lumian fixed his gaze and read silently. After, After the, the devil, devil monarch Farbalti led, led the devils back, back to the abyss, abyss occasional, occasional rumors, rumors persisted, persisted of demons, demons enticing, enticing humans. humans. The demons operated under the following names. Biobubli, Almos, Samael, Lilatan, and Nabarodizli. A high-ranking demon hunter speculated that these names conceal the aliases of demon monarch Farbalti. The demon monarch Farbalti's alias? Lumian felt a jolt as a thin layer of sweat coated his back. Could Nabarodizli be the devil monarch? The sealed blood-colored demon was the devil monarch? No. It doesn't seem likely. If it were a genuine ancient deity, 
Catching just the glimpse of his form wouldn't have resulted in my eyes exploding in a dream. I would have lost control immediately. Yes, perhaps Robaltis' pseudonym is among these names, but it doesn't necessarily mean Nabor Odisli is him. Lumian wiped his forehead with his right hand, forcing a smile as he addressed the library administrator. As a foreigner, am I truly allowed to read these books? The knowledge they contain is exceedingly precious. The library administrator responded calmly. The chief has already informed us that you are Mr. Fool's blessed. Very well, Lumian found it amusing. Apparently, not every foreigner could access this library. The library administrator offered no further warnings. He took the book chronicling pre-cataclysm rumors and departed from Lumian's vicinity. Lumian continued to alternate between reading devilology and creation tales, taking breaks as needed. As evening approached, he barely concluded both books and departed from the Twin Towers. Releasing his compressed spirituality, Lumian teleported back to the berries in Port Hanth. Surveying the still bright sky, Lumian confirmed that the investigation into Hanth Island's demon legends had reached its conclusion. The matter delved into complexities beyond his reach. He no longer hesitated about his next steps and plans. Since he hadn't fully digested the Conspirer Potion, he resolved to head to West Balaam and seek out Hisoka. There, he would hunt to digest the potion and complete the advancement ritual.